For over 75 years, Gector Brothers has been FEM's source for the exciting lineup of quality vehicles from Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. That's 75 years of making friends and servicing our loyal customers. And we look forward to the next 75 years of being FEM's source for Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. Now, let's meet the defense for your Effingham Flaming Hearts. At nose, number 58, Dustin Levitt. At one end, number 88, Carter Hayes. The other end, number 30, Scott Dink. The linebackers, starting with number 35, Billy Arndt. Number 21, Travis Durbin. Number 9, Levi Michael. Number 44, Tyler Johnson. Number 41, Andy Salcedo. At one corner, number 23, Drew Levitt. The other corner, number 24, Marcus Robinson. And a safety, number 29, Cody Sennett. Correction on the starting lineup, my apologies. Number 10, Dirk Levitt, will be starting at one corner for Effingham. In the return, he was tackled by 31, Stuart Arp. And if you haven't noticed, we have a technical difficulty with the delay game clock. We are working on the problem at this minute. Hearts have it first and ten at their own 38. Kane Vaughn on the reception. He's into Tiger territory. Tackle by Devin Walker. The Hearts have it first and ten at the Paris 48. Carry. The stop was by Blake Webster. The ball spotted at the Paris 45 yard line to gain three. It'll bring up second and seven. Levi Michael left the gut. First tackler was 84, Devin Walker. The game is down to the Tiger 39, brings up third and one. Nate 
Nathan Vale on the keeper. He's got a first down for Effingham. Aiden Keys along with Hunter Morris on the tackle. The Hearts have it first and ten on the Tiger 34. Shaking tacklers, he picks up another first down for Effingham. <laughs> Tackle on the last play was by Stuart Art. The Hearts have it first and goal. Kick is wide left. The score remains FM six and the Paris Tigers nothing with 10.06 remaining in the open quarter. Xavier hold on the return. Tigers have it, first and ten at their own 24. brings up second and nine from the 25. spotted near the Tiger 32 yard line. The Hearts will have it first and 10. Temples. A gain of eight brings up second and two from the 24. Hey Dave, I'm sorry to bother you. Are you at home or are you at the room? I have, I have a situation. Billy Arndt was the ball carrier. It's 
gets a first down Effingham. The tackler on the play was Blake Webster. The Hearts have a first and ten at the Tiger 21. I don't know if there's any way that you could grab me a radio from the station and there's a, a big long audio cable in my desk. Nathan Ball and Kate Long team up for a 21-yard scoring strike with 8.32 remaining. It's now nothing in 12 and Paris nothing. Try for two point conversion is no good. Credit Devin Walker on the stop of the Tigers. The score remains up again 12 and Paris nothing. That scoring drive covered 32 yards in three plays and 51 seconds. will be 58, Dustin Lev, deep to receive for the Tigers is number 31, Stuart Art. Art takes the return off the bounce, takes it up to the 40-yard line. has it first and ten at the 39. Hunter Morris on the carry brought down by Billy Arndt. Pick up to the 46 yard line of seven yards, it brings up second and three. Arp on the carry, brought down by Andy Salcedo. The game is up to the 48-yard line. It brings up third and one. Fumble on the play, recovered by Paris. And in the process, picks up a first down. Stuart Arp was the ball carrier, and he recovered his own fumble. The ball is spotted at the midfield stripe, and the Tigers have it first and ten.
Stewart up was the ball carrier. He was pushed out of bounds by Levi Michael. A gain of five to the Effingham 45. Brings up second and five. under pressure from Billy Arndt. It'll be third and five from the 45. along with Trent Barnhart on the pressure for Effingham causing the quarterback sack. It'll be fourth and 21 for the Tigers. Punning will be 87, Jacob Whitaker. Marcus Robinson on the return. Tackle by Devin Walker. By the way, the officials for tonight's contest, I failed to give you earlier, the referee is Kevin Olson, the umpire is Scott McClure, linesman Rod Smith, the line judge, Cody Adams, and the back judge, Blake Oren. The Hearts have it first and 10 at their own 37. Stuart Ark. The Hearts do indeed have a first and ten at the Paris 34. Howell on the carry. by Bobby Staley. Loss of Yard makes it second and 11 at the 35. Nathan Bale on the keeper. Tackle by Hunter Morris. It's a first down Effingham. It's first and ten from the twenty-three. Pass was incomplete. Levi Michael, the intended receiver. Penalty is against Effingham.
holding, offense, 10 yards from the previous spot, replay first down. The penalty takes back to the Tiger 33 yard line, the down remains the same, it will be first and 20. was incomplete. Kate Vaughn, the intended receiver. It brings up second in 20 foot arcs at the Tiger 33. Zach Miller, the ball carrier, tackled by Audie Temples. A gain of three brings up third and 17 from the 30. was intercepted by Abe Norman. Credit 53 Blake Webster for the hit on the quarterback causing the interception. Tackle was made by Zach Wilson for the Hearts. The Tigers take over with 3.15 remaining in the quarter. First and 10 at their own 27. Pitch was to Hunter Morris. Tackle by Dirk Levitt. Gain of seven brings up second and three. I'd like to remind you that in Community Unit 40 grounds are a state designated no smoking and tobacco free area. We thank you for not smoking or using tobacco on school property. Morris on the pitch. Tyler Johnson along with Levi Michael on the stop. The Tigers pick up a first down, first and ten on their own 37. Full start, offense, five yards, first down. The penalty takes it back to the Tiger 32 yard line. The down remains the same. It will be first and 15. Thank you. 
to Hunter Morris. Sack was made by Andy Salcedo. Lost two on the play. Back to the 30 yard line brings it. Take the ball up to the 45 yard line, the down remains the same. It will be second two. Stewart Art breaking tackles, picking up the first down for the Tigers. Tackle on the play was by Marcus Robinson. First and 10 at the FEM 40. Session comes at the Effingham 30 yard line where the Hearts will take over first and 10. Credit Peyton Bushu for applying the pressure on the quarterback. For over 75 years, Gector Brothers has been FM's source for the exciting lineup of quality vehicles from Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. That 75 years of making friends and servicing our loyal customers. And we look forward to the next 75 years of being FM's source for Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. Thirty-five. 
Ethan Vale on the keeper up near midfield. He's dragged down by 31 Stuart Hart. First and 10 at the Tiger 37. Takes it down to the Tiger 31, brings up third and four. Logan Howard was the ball carrier. Was by Blake Webster. The Hearts pick up a first down at the Tiger 27. They have it first and 10. Billy Arms up the middle. by Devin Walker. It's another first down up again. That's the Tiger 15. by Blake Webster. Lost a few on the play back to the 17 yard line brings up second and 12. Touchdown Evingham, Zach Blunder. Point 
Panthers no good. The score remains Effingham 18 and Paris nothing. That scoring drive covered 70 yards in 10 plays and 3 minutes 50 seconds. Making someone's day a little brighter or making them smile is as easy as a phone call to KM Floral Shop or visit them online at KMFloralshop.com. KM is a proud sponsor of Hearts Football. Go Hearts! Spencer on the scramble, tackled by Levi Michael. Short of the first down through the 40 two yard line. Coming will be Jacob Whitaker, back to receive for Effingham. Number 10, Dirk Levitt. And number 24, Marcus Robinson. Devin Walker. Thank you. Incomplete, Kate Vaughn, the intended receiver. 
the way you see what the flag is. Take it back to the 22 yard line. The down the range the same. It'll be second and 19. Now on the carry, dragged down by Devin Walker. Fourth and 19 so far, Chapter on 22. Jack Miller dropping back to front. Stuart Arp and Audie Temple are back to the sea for the Tigers. Temple's on the return, loses his footing up near midfield. The Tigers will take over at their 49-yard line, first and 10 with 5.07 remaining in the half. Back to the 42 yard line brings up second and 17. Third and 17 from the 42. Timeout first. It's your first timeout. And Major League Baseball. In the bottom of the first inning, it's 4-1 to one, St. Louis. Third and 17 for the Tigers from the 42. Complete. 
Trent Barnhart playing the pressure for Effingham. It'll be fourth and 17 for the Tigers, out to on 42. Dropping back to receive for Effingham is 24, Marcus Robinson, and number 10, Bruce Levin. near the 34-yard line. That's where Hart will take over with 4-10 remaining in the half. Among the fans, we'd like to ask you to please help Ebbingham High School stay clean by keeping the grounds and reaches clean and free from litter. Trash cans have been placed periodically throughout the area for trash deposit. First and 10 at their own 34. Zach Winter on the reception for FM, tackled by 34 Hunter Morris. Seven yards to the 41-yard line brings up second and three. Logan Howell on the carry. Stopped by number 54, Aiden Norman. It'll bring up third and two from the 42. takes it to the 48 yard line, the Hearts have it first and 10. Caden Vaughn on the reception, he's picked up another first down for Ebbingham. was made by Audi Temples. Ball spotted near the Tiger 31 yard line. The Hearts have it first and 10. Clock running with two and a half remaining. Snap from center recovered by Nathan Bale back near the 40 yard line. Was incomplete. It'll bring up third and 18 for the Hearts at the Tiger 39 with 211 remaining. is 
incomplete. Stuart Rod got his hand on the ball. It'll bring up fourth and 18 for the Hearts at the Tiger 39. goes out of bounds inside the five-yard line. That's where the Tigers will have it. First and ten with a minute 58 remaining in the half. on the carry. Good open field tackle by 29, Cody Sennett. The Tigers pick up a first down at their own 20-yard line. Clock running with a minute, 45 remaining. brings up second 11 from the 20. Was complete to Hunter Morris. Tackled by Travis Durbin. The Tigers pick up a first down at the 30 yard line with nine seconds remaining. Making someone's day a little brighter or making them smile is as easy as a phone call to KM Floral Shop or visit them online at KMFloralshop.com. KM is a proud sponsor of Hearts Football. Go Hearts! Homecoming coronation for 2012. We will start our evening by introducing this year's attendance. Your freshman attendants for the evening are Claire Nieberge. 
Claire is a daughter of Kim and Jason Nieberge. She is an athlete in cheerleading, swim team, and track. She says that her biggest role model is her mom because she is smart, strong, and brave. She always motivates her to do her best and loves her very much. Claire's favorite piece of advice is, you may not end up where you thought you'd be, but exactly where you're meant to be. Blake White. Blake is the son of Charlie and Lori White. He participates in football, basketball, baseball, and the math and Spanish clubs. Blake says that his biggest role models are his parents because they taught him right from wrong and have always supported him. His favorite quote from Michael Jordan says, I can accept failure, but I cannot accept trying. Freshman attendants, Claire Nieberge and Blake White. Emma Cool. Emma is the daughter of Steve and Becky Cool. She is a part of the EHS tennis team. On her free time, Emma enjoys hanging out with friends. Emma's biggest role model is her mom because she has always been there for her as a best friend. After high school, Emma would like to get a degree in cosmetology. Drew Vasquez. Drew is the son of Juan and Jennifer Vasquez. He is an athlete involved in football, track, and basketball. He is a member of student council. Drew's biggest role model is his dad because he always gives help and encouragement. In the future, Drew wants to work towards a civil engineering degree. His favorite piece of advice is the most of the world's feats have been accomplished by people not smart enough to realize they were impossible. Freshman attendance, Drew Vasquez and Emma Cool. Your sophomore attendance for the evening, Kelsey Curry. Kelsey is the daughter of Randy Curry and Kathy and Scott Craig. Kelsey is involved in band, palms, and the art club. She strongly believes that everyone in her life has contributed to the person she is today, therefore has no set role model. In the future, Kelsey would like to study in the medical field, move to a large city, and eventually start a family. Billy Arndt. Billy is the son of Jim and Kim Arndt. He is an athlete who is on the football, basketball, and track teams. On his free time, Billy enjoys exercising and playing sports. Billy's biggest role model is his dad because he always handles situations with good manners. His favorite piece of advice from Lince Lombardi is winners never quit and quitters never win. After high school, Billy plans to play college football. Sophomore attendance, Billy Arndt and Kelsey Curry. Kirsten Simmons. Kirsten is the daughter of Brandy Simmons and Jared Simmons. She participates in palms and gymnastics. Her biggest role model is her mom, Brandy, because she is a strong person, a hard worker, and does a lot for her, especially through her teen years. Kirsten has future plans to obtain a degree in the medical field and become a nurse practitioner. Carter Hayes. Carter Hayes is the son of Brian and Julia Hayes. Carter is an athlete who participates in SCA and plays baseball, basketball, and football. Carter's biggest role models are his parents because they've always been there for him. His favorite quote from Michael Jordan says, I've failed over and over in my life and that's why I succeed. Sophomore attendants, Kirsten Simmons and Carter Hayes. Your junior attendants for the evening are Bethany Donaldson. Bethany is the daughter of David and Missy Donaldson. She is an athlete involved in track and volleyball. Her biggest role model is her grandpa because he is a very kind person who cares a lot about his family and others. He is always very optimistic and fun to be around. Bethany's favorite quote is Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Isaac Foreman. Isaac is the son of Keith and Kay Foreman. He is an athlete involved in basketball and tennis. On his free time, Isaac enjoys hanging out with friends and watching Happy Gilmore. In the future, Isaac plans to attend college, get married, and start a family. 
Isaac says that his biggest role model is Rob Wetop because he is the greatest coach with a positive influence. Junior attendants, Bethany Donaldson and Isaac Foreman. Haley Myers. Haley is the daughter of Jeff Myers and Sherry Myers. She's involved in band, chem club, math club, and dance. In her free time, Haley enjoys going to blues games with the family, taking long drives with Olivia, and hanging out with friends. Her biggest role model is her sister, Hillary, because she gives the best advice about everything. Her favorite quote by Wayne Gretzky saying, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Marcus Robinson. Marcus is the son of Willie and Deborah Love. He participates in football, basketball, and Boy Scouts. In his free time, Marcus enjoys singing, knitting, and spending time with friends. Marcus's biggest role models are Caden Vaughn and Karth Maheshwari because they are his best friends. After high school, Marcus would like to finish college and become successful at whatever he decides to be. Junior attendants, Haley Myers and Marcus Robinson. Your senior king and queen candidates for the evening are Jordan Bolio. Jordan is a daughter of Diane Bolio and Tracy and Jamie Lidster. She is a participant of Drama Club, French Club, Student Council, and Face Community Theater. Her favorite quote from Audrey Hepburn says, For beautiful eyes, look for the good in others. For beautiful lips, speak words of kindness. For poise, walk in the knowledge that you're never alone. In the future, Jordan would like to tour Europe and become an English teacher. Hayden Baker. Hayden is the son of Richard and Miss City Baker. He participates in Spanish club and also enjoys skateboarding and hanging out with friends. His biggest role model is his grandpa because he is the most giving person that he's ever met. In the future, Hayden intends to get a degree in law to become an independent consultant. His favorite quote by Forrest Gump says, Life's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Senior candidates, Jordan Bolio and Hayden Baker. Shannon Doherty. Shannon is a daughter of Mark and Kathy Doherty. She participates in band, volleyball, spring musical, student council, NHS, and CEO. Shannon's biggest role model is her grandma, Nani, because she has a big heart. She has taught her to love and respect others. After high school, Shannon plans to get a degree in public relations and event management. Her favorite quote by Marilyn Monroe says, Keep smiling because life is a beautiful thing and there's so much to smile about. Jeff Keitel. Jeff is the son of Cal and Renee Keitel. He participates in cross country, wrestling, tennis, band, and student council. Jeff's biggest role model is his older brother Tim because of his great success. After high school, Jeff plans to major in economics, get married, and be successful. His favorite quote from Russell Simmons says, when you can give honestly from what is inside you, the world is going to come looking for you. Senior candidates, Shannon Doherty and Jeff Kyle. Sierra Cronwitter. Sierra is the daughter of John and Angie Cronwitter. She is an athlete on the softball team. Sierra's biggest role models are her parents because they always give advice and support her in every decision she makes. Sierra's favorite piece of advice is, never let the fear of striking out keep you from playing the game. After high school, Sierra would like to obtain a degree as a pediatric oncology nurse. Christian Sager. Christian is the son of Steve and Lori Sager. He's a proud member of the EHS marching band drumline. Christian's biggest role model is his dad, because he is a hardworking man who can fix anything. After high school, Christian aspires to earn a degree in auto engineering and music business and start a family of his own. His favorite quote is, success isn't measured by how much you accomplish, but how much fun you have doing it. Senior candidates, Sierra Cronwitter and Christian Sager. The retiring king and queen, Travis Folk and Madeline Totten. Travis is attending Lakeland College and is majoring in clinical laboratory science. He plans to transfer to a university where he can attain his bachelor's degree. Madeline is attending Illinois State University, majoring in chemistry. She plans on continuing her education to become an anesthesiologist. <laughs> this is your 2012 homecoming court.
Your 2012 homecoming king and queen are Christian Sager and Shannon Doherty. those football games stop by andy's health mart pharmacy and see what we can do for you ask one of our pharmacists about the products that can get you back into game shape locally owned and conveniently located at 805 west fayette andy's health mart pharmacy caring for you and about you the half as we get ready to roll into the second half of this homecoming game Effingham in front of Paris, 18 to nothing. Mark scored twice in the first quarter, once in the second quarter. And we'll see what they can do about keeping it up. And I'll tell you, Millie, the defense has been every bit as impressive as the offense tonight. It sure has. And I'm telling you, there's plenty of seats out here. There's a great second half coming up. Come on out. Yeah, exactly. Come on out and enjoy yourself. Next week, we go to Matt Toon, last road game of the regular season. Holy cow. Dustin Levitt kicks it from the 40, hammers it. It's taken and then dropped by Matt by Paris, but it's picked up by the other back back there, and he gets it out across the 30-yard line. The ball was touched by Audie Temples. Arp followed him up, grabbed it, and gets it out across the 30 to the 31-yard line. That's where Paris will set up shop to start our second half. So first and 10 for Paris at their 31. Hearts in front, 18-0 as we start this second half. Tackle by Scott Dink there. And the Tigers ready to have rock. First and 10 out there on we start the second half. <coughs> Riley Spencer, the Paris quarterback, up under center here to start the second half. Gives the handoff to the deep back and not much. Stewart up on the handoff. As they give it to Arp, he advances the football to the 34. Nice tap by Travis Durbin. Tackle by Travis Durbin Got under. under Tyler Johnson. Made the tackle. From the 31 to the 34, gain of three. three. It's second and seven. Brings up second and seven. So second and seven here. 11 just into our third quarter. Thanks to Culver's for the food. Thanks to Subway and Mr. Waltman for the food. None of which I've had a chance to eat yet, but hey, that's all right. Up under center on second down. There's the handoff to Arp. He comes to the near side. Now turns it up and gets it out across the 40 before they take him down. Cody Sennett and Tyler Johnson on the stop for the Hearts. Tackled by Tyler Johnson. To the 42. 34 to the 42 gain of eight. That's enough for a first down. So the Tigers come out on the ground and moving the football here. Hearts lost their first four. Won an exciting game. Well, actually, the last, fourth quarter in the overtime was especially exciting last week. Hearts beat Salem at Salem 14-13 and leading here 18-0 on homecoming night. Man in motion for Paris. There's the snap. There's the pitch. And there's not too much there, so he turns it up the middle and then back. Got it out to the 45-yard line. Hunter Morris. Not a bad, not a bad play by Hunter Morris. Line. Billy Arndt among those that got in there on the stop for him at the 35. Of course, all the football players, we had several football players mentioned in the homecoming court at halftime, but all those kids were downstairs, so some of the other members of the homecoming court were doing double duty, trying to make sure that they, all the ladies had an escort to the 46, gain of four, second and six. Ball of the Paris 46. Spencer stays up under center here. Fakes the handoff. Gives the handoff. Levi Michael was having none of it. Might have got him for a loss. Carter Hayes back there, but Levi Michael on the stop. Arp carry to the back to the 44. A loss of two on that play. Nice job of sniffing that out. And that'll bring up a third and eight. 18 nothing Hearts. They scored twice in the first quarter. Posted another score in the second period. Haven't been able to convert on any of the three touchdowns. But you know, I always have to have something to gripe about. So it's 18-0. Spencer up under center on third and eight. Wants to, hand, wants to throw across the middle. Quick opener, and it is Whoa. hits the deck. And boy, what a collision. Two hearts were going for the ball. 
uh, sent it for Effingham, and it was Hunter Morris for Paris. And I am telling you, Senate hit Morris a lick. It was really close, but the ball went up for grabs. And just about the time that Morris might have thought about catching the football, he got hit a lick by Senate. And actually, it's not Morris. It's Thomas Bloomfall, their tight end. I've been looking for him to try and make a catch all night. It was him that got hit a lick. Bloomfall number 24 rather than Morris 34. And the pass is incomplete. And that'll bring up a fourth down and eight. Ball still at the Paris 44, and they're going to kick it away now here. So they had to take a minute to get Bloomfall walked off the field. So back to punt. A lot of time. Gets the kick away right down the middle. It is fielded by nobody. Now it's hit, and it gets loose, but it was a Paris kid that hit it, so the officials marked where it was tagged, and it'll be out around the 25-yard line or so. Punt is down at the Effingham 15-yard line. That's where the Hearts will take over. First wow. With 917 remaining in the third quarter. Okay, they say it was down at the 15. I saw the official throw his marker where it went. They're having none of that. First and 10 at the 15. Now, wait well, a minute. Now, they're moving. now they are going to see. The one official threw a marker where the ball was touched, and they are going to bring it out, which is as it should be. So it's going to be first and 10 out of the 22. Yeah. Yeah. Thank well, you, gentlemen. That's the way it should be. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah. First and 10 at the 22. I saw, I saw the official throw his marker when they touched it. So it's first and 10 at the 22. Hearts try it on the ground on first down and a decent gain out across the 25-yard line. That's Caden Vaughn. Caden Vaughn, the ball carrier. From the 22 to the 27, a gain of five, and that'll bring up a second and five. A gain of five up to the 27 yards. Now, I never did tell you about Mark Mayhood's fundraiser, did I? I promise, Mark, I'm going to get that on for you, buddy. Second and five out to the 27 now. Up under center, Vail. Hand off to the deep back and moving forward a little. Howell took the handoff. Made it at a 20. The no, actually not a lost yardage. Lost yardage. Logan Howell had the handoff, and it's back to the 25, a loss of two. So that did not go well, and it's third and seven. Hart's heading to Mattoon next week and then back home for the last two games of the regular season. Mount Zion here, and that's going to be a real men wear pink event. That's what it was last year when Mount Zion came here, and it was one of the most memorable games we've seen here. And then they'll wrap it up against Muhammad Seymour to wrap up the regular season. Shotgun now. Vale wants to throw out on the sidelines. It is caught and then dropped. Carter Hayes was the intended receiver and a, ma and a Paris player out there also. By the Tigers. And did he get the pick? Stuart Arp has gotten the interception. Arp got the pick at the 25 of Effingham. Carter Hayes was the intended receiver, but Stuart Arp got the interception for Paris. So the Hearts went ahead and threw, and maybe that's one we should have put in our pocket, but it's stolen away by Paris on the interception, and they have it first and 10 at the Hearts' 25-yard line. So an interception for Vale, Arp with the interception, first and 10 Tigers at Effingham's 25. 8.08 to go in the third quarter. Spencer up under center gives it to his deep back, and still on his feet, now going down is Hunter Morris, I thought, but let me double check. Stuart Arp. Arp, the ball carrier, to the 23, a gain of two. So the 23, it's second and eight. So Arp gets two, and it's second and eight. Prepares at the Hearts 23. So they get the pick this time, and they're knocking on the Hearts door. Effingham in front, 18 0. And from the shotgun now, Spencer looking to throw, goes to the far side, and it is up, and it is incomplete. The pass was incomplete. Boy, it was close. Audie Temples, the intended it, uh, receiver. Audie Temples was the intended receiver, but uh, he was unable to make the pick or make the grab, it will be and it falls incomplete, and that'll bring up a third and eight again. Harris at the Hearts 23-yard line. The incomplete pass stops the clock with 7.24 to go in the third quarter. We'll remind you it's a busy sports weekend for us. We'll have Rams football for you Sunday as they play host to Seattle. 
noon kickoff at St. Louis, 11 o'clock pregame show. You can hear that right here on 97.9 XFM as well. And we have timeout on... That's their first timeout. Paris calls time. 7.24 to go third quarter. They wanted to sort it out. Back in a minute, 18-0 Effingham here on homecoming night on 97.9 XFM. Cardinals in that big series against Washington, and Scott Mosier tells me the Cardinals lead at 9-1. to one, So all the Cardinal fans are excited about that, trying to get that second playoff spot. All right, Paris back to throw here. Going to the corner, and it is picked. It's off. Intercepted yeah. by the Hearts. The is intercepted by Marcus Robinson. Marcus Robinson stepped right in front of the Paris receiver and got the pick, and boy, is that huge. Paris had some momentum for one of the few times in this game offensively. And Marcus Robinson steps up and makes the interception at the six. So the Hearts get the ball back. Admittedly, they have a long way to go, but Paris can't score if they don't have the ball. Hearts lead at 18-0. The interception comes with 7-19 to go in the third quarter. Nice work by Marcus Robinson. Boys, doing some nice work at that corner spot for the Hearts. So, 7-19 to go in the third quarter. And it's... 18-0 Hearts, and the Hearts get the ball back, and they give it up the middle and got a little bit of yardage out across the 10-yard line. Caden Vaughn carried, and they'll spot it at the 6-0 no gain. A gain of a yard to the 7-yard line brings up 7-9. Right. Give him one. All right. Scott has a better angle than me. Well, that's a better thing. So one yard for Caden Vaughn to the 7. That'll make it 2nd and 9. 6.53 to go. Third quarter. Hearts up 18-0 here on homecoming night. There's the play. They run it up the gut, and Vale kept, I think, and he's out across the 15-yard line. Might have a first down. And, and there's a, a late, late flag. Very, very late flag. Let's see what that's about. Blake Webster along with Xavier. Vale got it out across the 15 to the 16-yard line. Penalties on the Tigers. So some good news here. Here's the official word. Five-yard face mask. Defense added to the end of the run. First down. So, Millie, it was a gain to the 17. No, it was a gain to the 12. Pardon me. So a, so a seven-yard gain to the 12, and then five more to the... 17 yard line excuse me the 21 yard line I, that's what was messing me up i apologize he had a gain to the 17 yard line so it was a 10 yard gain and then five added on to that Billy because of the carry. penalty to the 22 and now they'll aren't carries and he gets it out across the 25 to the 26 so a gain of five and that'll bring up a second and five it's my apologies really that's the wrong okay yard i was off in la la land there so. had the wrong yard marker Vail up under center on second and the long five and up the middle. Caden Vaughn says, I'm coming. And he gets a first down. Boy, he is having a heck of a night. Caden didn't carry a whole lot the first couple of weeks. Since then, he has just been rolling. Out across the 35 to the 37-yard line. Gain of 11. Gain of 11. And a new set of downs for the Hearts. And Paris jumps now as Vail... Stood up. He's checking the sidelines, but Paris got back before the snap, so no harm, no foul here. Vale settles up under center now, and he gives the handoff to the up back, and that should be Vaughn in that set, and he gets it out across the 40, but let's see who peels out from underneath there. Bill Arndt comes out of the scrum. Levi Michael has run at that spot a few times this season. Vaughn a lot this season. Now Bill Arndt's getting some touches out across to the 41. 37 to the 41, Mill. Gain of four and it's second and six. 5.13 to go third quarter. Hearts in front, 18-0. Big interception by Marcus Robinson. Blunt of that last heart, that last Paris drive. Nice run here by Logan Howell into Paris territory for a first down. Nice run by Logan Howell, one of his most successful of the night. Into Paris territory to the Tiger 49. So from Effingham's 41 to the 49, a gain of 10. And that's enough, obviously, for a first down. So the Hearts into Paris territory. Not getting in a big hurry, as you'd expect, leading 18-0. Vail back to the shotgun here on first and 10. Hand off to Hal, who's lined up alongside him. Stopped him. Now he's back on his feet, still driving and diving, and he gets it inside the 45 near the 42-yard line. Nice run by Hal. 
from Paris is 49. Logan advances it to the 43, a gain of six. So a six-yard gain, that'll bring up a second and four. <clears throat> Hart's on the move again. Scored twice in the first quarter. Added another score in the second period. Leading it here 18-0. At Paris' 43, Vail back to the shotgun here. And here's the reverse. Caden Vaughn coming to the near side. Get him a block, boys. 45 inside the 35 before they bring him down. And another Hart's first down. Boy, that has worked so well so often this season. From the 43, they advance the football to the 34. Gain a nine. Gain a nine, and that's enough for another Hearts first down. We well, love this, Millie, when you're ahead. You can chew up so much clock. You oh, just run it here and yeah. run it, run it, and get just enough success to keep that clock moving. 3.50 to go third quarter. Four first downs this quarter. And the Hearts still driving and diving. A new first down here. Bale shotgun. Hal lined up beside him. There's the handoff to Logan. Moves it up the middle. Good burst of speed. Still on his feet inside the 30. Still on his feet. Three people trying to bring him down. He goes down at the 30, but his initial penetration was to about the 28. So let's see where that is spotted. Call it the 29 from the 34 to the 29. A gain of five. It'll be second and five. Nice run by Logan Hal. Yeah, he kept charging, charging, and Paris players kept jumping on him and jumping on him. He had about three or four on him there by the end. We head to Mattoon next Friday night. Last regular season road game, and then we're back here for two home games, Mount Zion and Muhammad Seymour. Time called while the Paris trainer's out taking a look at one of the Tiger players, and they're going to help him off the field now. He's on his own power, but hanging on the shoulders of a couple of officials from the Paris squad. So he'll head off to the sidelines. Let's see if we can pick up a number about who's the young man. One of their linemen, I believe. Anyway, Hearts have it. Second and five at the Paris 29-yard line from the shotgun. Bale's going to keep up the gut to the 25 and near a first down. Nathan, a good run. Right on the 25, they'll spot it. Gain a four. So that'll bring up a third and one. So third and one at the 25. Christian Sager and Shannon Doherty, by the way, your homecoming king and queen for EHS. Fail up under center on third and one. Hand off to the up back, and the Hearts get the first down. That's Billy Art again, and he gets the first down. Scored at the 22-yard line. 25 to the 22, gain of three. We needed one. First down, Effingham. And they continue to churn it out here. This drive started with, what, like seven minutes left in the quarter? Something yes, I like wish that. I'd been paying attention. Boy, Some, that, they're eating it up. Something like that, and we're down to 2-2-2 two, two, two in the period now. New set of downs. There's a handoff to Howe. Logan gets it, still on his feet inside the 20. Hearts keep churning up yardage. Good work by the line up there. A lot of heroes out there. Mr. Boggs out there. He's hard to miss. Of course, Cole Moran, the center now for the Hearts with the injury to Jordan Tun. So lots of kids playing well up on that O-line for Effingham. Zach Wilson out there. And... Uh, Shout out to Kai Harmon, who's back after an injury that they thought might have had him out for the season. He's back tonight. That's a big boost for the Hearts. They run it up the middle here. And let's see who gets peeled off the turf. That's Art again. Bill Art to the 17-yard line. So that'll bring up a third and four situation. So they've advanced it to Paris' 17. It's third and four. Minute 20 left in this third quarter. Boy, the Hearts have run off huge amount of time. Line it up in the eye here. Hal the deep back. On the up back. He gets the handoff. We get a flag. I think it's on us. It's in the Effingham backfield. Let's see. Ball start. Yep. Offense. Replay third down. All right. Procedure penalty on Effingham. 
So that's a five-yard walk-off, and that'll make it third and nine from the line of scrimmage. That's back to the 22-yard line. <coughs> so third and nine now. One minute left in the third quarter. So third and nine at the 22. And the Hearts just continue to sustain this drive. Vail from the shotgun here on third and nine. Looking to throw. Flat. Sets over extended. Past Caden Vaughn. Comes up incomplete. Caden ran as far as he could, as quickly as he could, but Vale led him a little long. Pass incomplete. Stops the clock with 46 seconds left in the third quarter. Brings up a fourth and nine. So fourth and nine here for the Hearts at Paris's 22-yard line. Millie, come up with a fourth and nine play. Oh, great. Thanks. Well, that's okay, you know. See, it's just this <laughs> lightning quick thing, you know, here. <laughs> and make the, you that's make why the I'm not the quarterback. <laughs> All right, here we go. Fourth and nine at the 22 of Paris. This will be a big first down if the Hearts can pull this off. Bail from the shotgun. And a whistle. Paris is <laughs> across Whoa. the line of scrimmage. <laughs> One of the Hearts linemen on his fanny. I think it's Zach Wilson as Paris came a knocking. And I think the Hearts are going to get this five yards back. I think so. I think that was an obvious penalty. They might have been drawn off. Let's see. Yeah, may have been. Snap and fraction. Offense. Five yep. yards. Still fourth down. Snap and fraction on the Hearts. Move well, that football shucks. too quick. So that's another five. So now it's back to the 27, and it's third. It's fourth and 14. After the walk off, back to the a little more room for a pass play now. It will bring up fourth and 14. Yes. Now we can see the whole field. Good thinking. Back to the 27, and it's fourth and 14. So let's see what the Hearts do here. Zach Plumker out here on the tight end spot here to the near side. See what the Hearts do. Vale again from the shotgun. Hal lined up beside him. Vale going to throw. Comes back across his body. Overthrows Bill Arndt. Pass incomplete. And Paris will take it over on downs. So the drive comes to a stop in part because of the penalty problems. Paris takes it over. First and 10 on their 27. Boy, the Hearts ran off almost that entire third quarter on offense that trip. Yeah, 31 seconds left. And they got the ball, I think, on the pick with like seven minutes to go or something like that and now there's 31 seconds left and uh, that's a heck of a drive even though they don't come up with any points they ate up an awful lot of time that drive so let's see what happens here first and 10 for Paris at their 27 could be the last play of the third quarter here Spencer their quarterback up under center he's rolling to the near side he wants to throw off the wrong foot it is picked oh, Dirk done. Levitt got his helmet taken off he still makes the interception there's a flag thrown late. Dirk Levitt's helmet came off. He still made the interception. His mom was nervous about him playing football. Well, he's that's, fine. That's you a, suppose a helmet comes I know, off. I know. It, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, it's all right, it's Mom. Fine. All right. He gets the pick. That's the most important thing. Paris had just gotten the ball back. Now, now the officials are talking this over. Hmm. This is important how they settle this. The football... Ended up at about the 38-yard line of Paris. So let's see what happens here. Here's the here's the ruling. Effingham has intercepted the ball. It will be first and ten. Additionally, personal foul, face mask, defense, 15 yards. So that's why the helmet came off. Uh huh. So an interception for Dirk Levitt, his second of the game, right? Yes, second of the game. And Marcus Robinson has one to boot. And so that'll advance the football to the 22-yard line. So the Hearts have it first and 10 at Paris's 22-yard line. So uh, it was a major infraction because the football was at the 37, 15 yards to the 22, and now they've thrown a flag on the sidelines over on the Paris side of the field. Let's see what this is about. Oh. This is not anything that's going to hurt Effingham. No, I don't think the coach is happy over there. They threw a flag on the sidelines. And uh, Mike Brewer has been at Paris for a while. We've had some spirited battles through the years. Paris, first down. All right. So it's not, it's, not a, it's not a penalty. It's a warning. Okay. It's a warning. Okay, first and ten for the Hearts at Paris is 22. So that was a warning. Bale's going to try it from the shotgun. 
25 seconds left. They bring Hal in motion. Vail to throw across the middle. Caught! And it is in and near. Or is he there? No, he's just shy of the goal line. Nice grab by Zach Miller. Heck of a catch by old number 32. First and goal at the one. So from the 27 mil to from the uh, 22 milli to the one, gain of 21. From the 22 to the one, Zach Miller with the catch. First and goal at Paris's one yard line. Nice grab. Boy, he had heavy traffic there. Pretty pass by Nathan. He kept it up, and Zach was able to go up and grab that. Fell at the one. So first and goal for Effingham at Paris's one yard line. That was a heck of a catch by Zach Miller. So let's see if the Hearts can punch it in here with 19 seconds left in this third quarter. Vail from the shotgun. Vaughn lined up beside him in this set. There's the snap. Hand off to Caden. He keeps Tried it. to go up the middle. He nope. keeps it. He Vail. keeps it and he scored. Nathan Vail. So Caden Vaughn was the man to whom they faked. Vale kept and took it in for the score. So Nathan Vale scores from one yard out. And the fake was effective, obviously. So with seven seconds left in the third quarter, the Hearts add to their lead. It's now 24-0 Effingham on the one-yard touchdown run by Nathan Vale. Now the extra point try. Hearts are 0 for 3 so well, far. Well, now let's on. see us get this. <laughs> That's okay with me. Let's see what we're going to do first. Bale check on the sidelines. We haven't tried to throw for two yet. We've kicked. We've run it. And we're going to go for two here. Now we're not. We're going to kick after all. Paris didn't bite, so now we'll drift back into the traditional set. Miller to kick from Vale's hold. Good snap. Placement kicks up, and the kick is... Good. There All you right. go. Twenty-four nothing Effingham. Twenty-five nothing Effingham. As the extra point by Zach Miller's good. Hearts lead at twenty-five nothing. Six point six seconds left. Third quarter back with a kickoff in a minute on ninety-seven nine XFM. Got aches and pains from those football games? Stop by Andy's Health Mart Pharmacy and see what we can do for you. Ask one of our pharmacists about the products that can get you back into game shape. Locally owned and conveniently located at 805 West Fayette. Andy's Health Mart Pharmacy, caring for you and about you. Go Hearts, go! Go Hearts, go! Go Hearts, go! So the Hearts add to the lead. One yard touchdown run by Nathan Vale. Zach Miller's kick good and the Hearts are up 25-0. 6.6 6 seconds left in this third quarter. Let's see what Dustin Levitt can do here on the kickoff. Puts his foot into it, a low-line drive this time. Fielded by Paris at about the 17-yard line. They bring it back up the gut, and down he goes at about the 35. And is the ball loose again? Fumble on the play. And let's see who gets it. Might have been the Hearts. Yeah. It was either Trent Barnhart. I think Trent Barnhart might have come up with that, or Caden Vaughn. I'm not sure who, but somebody's happy. And I'll double check here about who ended up. I think that might have been Caden that got that one. Paris has had trouble with the ball all night. They lost it there, and the Hearts recover. And Effingham, with no time showing on the third quarter, so we'll send it to the other end of the field. Hearts will have the football as we start the fourth quarter. So they just scored. And then Paris gives it back on the kickoff. Recovered by number 21, Travis Durbin. Oh, well, okay, Travis Durbin got oh, the well, fumble hey. recovery. All right, I don't care as long as it's somebody in red. Travis Durbin recovers the fumble. That ends the third quarter. So it's first down Hearts at their 34-yard line. Courtney, let's take a 30-sec. Well, no, let's keep it here. Let's just keep it here. Let's just keep it here. We'll see whether Larry Wilson won something this week. Ticket for the 50-50 is a blue ticket. And the BA announcers will collect your winnings tonight. The jackpot is worth $100. If you have the blue ticket, number 271286. See, if you didn't stay, then you're going to feel bad if you had that ticket, see? Yeah. 271286. is a red ticket. All right. Anyway, let's get back to the ball game here. It's at the 34. Effingham has the ball first and 10 at their 34 as we start this fourth quarter again. Wayne will have video on the game on the website over the weekend at 97inxfm.com. We'll have a busy post-game show as we'll visit with Coach Mack and a couple of the kids and all the scores and all the stats and all kinds of fun. 
Sponsored by Dan Eck Chevrolet Toyota. Let's see what happens here on first down. Hearts are driving. And uh, pass is complete. The Zach Miller. No, I'm not convinced it was Miller. Hal was out there. Yeah, Miller did get the catch. It is complete to the 30. So a gain of three makes it second and seven. Ball's just shy of the 30. Gain of three on the play down to the 31 yard line brings up second and seven. So second and seven as they're working in Paris territory after that interception. Bail from the shotgun, hands it off to Howe, and down he goes. Boy, that uh, was sniffed out. What's well, Zach Miller was the ball carrier. That was sniffed out well by Paris. Miller back outside the 35-yard line to the 37. Loss of six on that one. Loss of six on that play. That did not go well. So that'll bring up third down. And 12, 13, something like that. The ball back to Paris's 37-yard line. We're into the fourth quarter now, and the Hearts now lead at 25-0 on the Tigers. Vale will try it from the shotgun here on third and 13. Man in motion is Miller. Vale's going to keep. Nathan runs it up the middle. Good gain. He's near the 25 and inside about the 23-yard line, and he got the first down. Nice run by Nathan Vale, the Hearts quarterback, and he got a first down out of it. So they had third and 13, and Nathan got all of that and then some from the 37, Millie. He advances the football to the 23, gain of 14, and the Hearts have a new set of downs. So first and 10 for the Hearts at the Paris 23-yard line. Hearts already in front here, 25-0, looking for their second victory in a row. Vale stays in the shotgun. Man in motion. That time it's Miller. Vale keeps again. Nathan going to the far side inside the 15 or near the 15-yard line when they take him down. So nice run by Nathan again. He's feeling his oats. And they'll score it right at the 25-yard, 15-yard line, pardon me. From the 23 to the 15, gain of 8. And it's second and 2 now at Paris's 15-yard line. Next week, we head to Mattoon to play the Green Wave, be our first regular season game against the Wave. We'll see you there next Friday night at 7, right here where you're listening. Vail to throw, lofts it up. He's got Whoa. Blumker there. He dies for it, cannot make the catch. It comes up incomplete. The pass was incomplete. Sent him to the end of the end zone and overthrew him a little. And he had a Paris defender just stuck to him like glue. It'll be 32 from the So, stops the clock with 9.38 left in the game. And it'll bring up a third and two. Effingham with the football at the 15-yard line of the Tigers. Hart scored two touchdowns in the first quarter, one in the second, one in the third. So good balance tonight. And boy, have they chewed up clock tonight. Time of possession is hugely in Effingham's favor. Bail from the shotgun. He's been there most of the night. Runs it up the gut. Good run going, still on his feet near the five-yard line before they take him down. So Nathan Bales pulling the team this time. He's carried most of the carries on this series. Gain to the five from the 15 to the five. That should be enough for a first down in anybody's league. First and goal at Paris's five-yard line. So the Hearts knocking on the door one more time. Again, a takeaway, the factor here. Vale gives it to Vaughn, up the gut. Nope, he kept. Vale kept, and he gets hit for a loss, and now there's a late flag. Correction, Vale kept the ball on the play. Vale kept, and he got taken down for, I think, a loss, and then a very late flag. Let's see what that flag's about. Hmm. Face mask. Face mask. On Paris. Paris, okay. Well, that's break. Well, that's a break, because Vale got hit for a loss. Face mask on the Tigers, half the distance to the goal. So it's first and goal at the four-yard line. Ball was back to the eight. Point of the infraction, the penalty is assessed, four-yard penalty. So it's first and goal at the four now. So the Hearts lost yardage and ended up with an advantage because of the penalty. See what happens here on first and goal from the four. You've got Vale in the shotgun, Vaughn beside him. Man in motion, going to throw out here in the flats. Oh. It's 
Blumker or Howell. Howell is taken down back at the 10. That didn't work. Harris, good job of sniffing that out. And the Hearts complete the pass and lose yardage back to the 10. Millie, a loss of six on the pass completion. So it's first and goal, second and goal, pardon me, at the 10 and another flag on the far side of the field. Let's see what this one's about. Wow. Over on the Paris side of the field, all of a sudden, lots of penalties in this game. Yes, there are. Two officials talking it over. Let's see what the ref tells us here. It's Kevin. Paris. Paris again. Sideline warning, so no penalty. Oh, no penalty. That's their second sideline warning, though. Hmm. So I think that means somebody's night's over. That's their second sideline warning. So, ball will go... To the five... Yes, five-yard line. Well, the four. Why are we on the five? I don't know. So, warning's not a penalty, so I don't see yeah. why the field position changed. Because the ball was to the ten. That's they, right. So they marked that off as half the distance, but it wasn't a penalty. It was just a warning. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, it's second and goal, and the ball's at the five. I think it should be at the four, but they're not going to ask me, are they? Hearts try to run the football. Vale this time, and he's stuffed. stacked up. Might have lost a yard. Might have lost a yard here. First to the six. So from the five to the six, a loss of one. So now it's third and goal at the six. A loss of yard back to the six yard line. This has been oh, tough. This is bouncing back and forth, I guess. I'm saying let's give it up the middle to somebody and <laughs> see what grief. happens here. Wow. So it's third and goal at the six now. Hart's already leading 25 nothing. But you wouldn't mind punching an extra one in here. Vale from the shotgun. Nobody with him in the backfield this time. They spread everybody. Vaughn's in motion. Let's see what happens here. Going to throw. There's Another penalty. Down goes oh. Vale back at the 15 in the meantime. Nathan Vale sack in the backfield. So my guess is that's a procedure penalty. Let's see if I'm right. Yeah, it's against the hearts. Yeah. Might have been an ineligible man. Yeah, it's an illegal shift. That's a call. So that's another five. But Paris may say, no way, we don't want that because that brings up fourth down, although I think they'd want to push him back farther from the goal line. Let's see. Illegal shift, offense, penalty is declined. Declined. Fourth down. Okay, they turned it down to bring up fourth down. All right, so the ball now on that Let's not see. successful play back to the 14-yard line, back to the 19-yard line, pardon me. It's still goal to go. And they were at the five, right? So that's minus 14. And we're going to kick a field goal. They'll spot it at the 25, so it's a 35-yard field goal attempt. Zach Miller from Vale's Hold. Get him a good snap here. Good snap. Placement. Kicks up. Kicks way short. No. Nope. Paris might have got a hand on that I think they got a one. hand because they went sideways. So the field goal try from 35 by Zach Miller unsuccessful. <laughs> and that uh, that drive, well, basically kind of fizzled. But the Hearts knock some more time off the clock. That's the name of the game there. And 7.38 to go. And the Hearts lead it 25 nothing. So the ball spotted at the 20 on the touchback. And it's first and 10. First and 10 for Paris at their 20-yard line. So the field goal try unsuccessful. First and 10 for the Tigers at their 20 on the touchback. 25-0 Effingham, 7.38 to go. Next week we go to Mattoon to play the Green Wave. We'll see you there. Spencer's going to drop back in the shotgun for Paris here on first and 10. They've got to get something going. They're down 25 nothing in the fourth quarter. There's the snap. There's the pitch. They used that pitch play early in the game, and it worked some. That time it's Morris. Hunter Morris gets it out across the 25-yard line. He's taken down there by... Well, Miller's out there in the midst of it. Out across the 25. Noah Hagen. Trent Barnhart helped Noah Hagen out there on the stop for the Hearts to the 26. So from the 20 to the 26, again a six that time for Morrison at second and four. Seven oh eight left in this one. Spencer in the shotgun. Takes his time. There's the low snap, but he gets it. Going to throw across the middle. It is incomplete. Clock stops with 6.54 to go. Brings up a third and four. 
threw it right across the middle. Came up empty. So third and four now for Paris. Hearts lead at 25-0. They have passed for two and run for two touchdowns tonight. Plus yeah. had some outstanding defensive plays. Mm-hmm. Two interceptions, two fumble recoveries. Not much to carp about tonight. Noah Higgins out there in the secondary, along with Marcus Robinson, and then your deep guys are Cody Sennett and uh, Matt Waltman getting some time out there. Here comes Paris, and they get it out around the 35-yard line. Stuart Arp got the first down. They'll mark it at the 35-yard line. From the 26 to the 35, a gain of eight, and a first down for the Tigers. Zach Miller on the stop for the Hearts. So a new set of downs for Paris with 6.40 to go. Boy, the Hearts uh, have just owned this game. Brandon Loy out on the D-line for Effingham. So give a shout-out to him. Spencer goes up under center here on first and 10 for Paris at their 35-yard line. Looking to throw. Takes his time. Still can't get it loose. Here come the Hearts. Barnhart's after him. Throw is finally attempted. It's incomplete. Nice work. Trent Barnhart and Peyton Bushu had him on the run. Pass came up empty. And that'll bring up a second and 10. Clock stops with 6.13 left in the game. We'll talk with Coach Mack, a couple of the seniors. We'll get you all the scores Courtney can find, Millie's stats. A reminder again, you can see all this online at 979xfm.com. So enjoy that. If you want a DVD, call Millie Monday through Friday. Boy, I'm everywhere, aren't I? Well, tell you, what can I say? You're earning your keep, Mill. Yeah, that's true. Spencer up under center. Rolls, looking to throw. Now has to run the ball. Takes it up the middle. The hearts are after him. He's still on his feet. Might have the first down. He's very close to it. They ran him out near the 45-yard line. Might come up just shy. They'll score it at the 43-yard line. So from the 35 to the 43, again, of eight. Brandon Loy, who I just talked about, playing the right side of the D-line, got over there and made that tackle on the left side. So a gain of eight, and it's third and two. Paris with the ball at their 43-yard line. Got out of bounds. Clock stops with 6.03 left. Spencer up under center here on third and short. There's the handoff. They've got the first down and then some. It's Arp. He's into Effingham territory, still on his feet, inside the Hearts 40 before they finally take him down. Stuart Arp, nice run. Great second and third effort, in fact. And a lot of people on the stop. Andy Lustig's out there for the Hearts in on that stop. To the 40. So seven yards to midfield. Another 10, 17-yard gallop there for Stuart Arp. That adds to his numbers. How's he doing tonight? Well, he's doing pretty darn good. Tigers have it first and 10 at the FBM 40. So, our so many yards, Millie's he's still. got 36 in this half. There you are. Thank you. Pitch play here. They come up the middle again. This time it's uh, Audie Temples, and he gets it inside the 20, inside the 30, excuse me. Audie Temples carried, was it? Hunter Morris carried the football for okay. Paris. From the 40, he advances it to the 28. So a gain of 12 here. <coughs> Lloyd came over for the stop for the Hearts. Gain of 12 to the 28 and a new set of downs for Paris. 518 to go. Hearts up by 25. They'd like to keep the shutout, you know. Spencer up under center here. First and 10 for Paris. Looking to throw. Throws it out in the flats. It is caught. And then a nice run after the catch inside the Hearts 25-yard line. Catch is made by Audie Temples. And Temples advances the football to the 22-yard line. So from the 28 to the 22 mil, gain a six on that pass play at second and four. Marcus Robinson came up, made the stop for the Hearts. I tell you, the juniors played some good football tonight, including a big interception when Paris was knocking on the door. So second and four here. Harris continues this drive. Spencer up under center. Pitch play. And it is successful. Arp to the near side. And the Hearts taking down inside the 20. Stuart Arp carried. 
Here's Brandon Loy again. Brandon feeling his oats here tonight, getting a chance to play an extended varsity stretch here and doing well. Arp to the 20, make it the 17-yard line. So from the 22 to the 17, a gain of five. And that's enough for a first down. So first down on the five-yard run there by Arp. And we're down to 4-10 to play in this one. Spencer up under center. Takes his time. Hand off to the quick up man. And a decent gain inside the 15. Hunter Morris, the ball carrier. And all kinds of people in there. Travis Durbin among them on the stop for the hearts. And a shout out also. Wyatt Cayley's out there for the hearts. To the 12, Millie, let's say. To the 12 from the 17 to the 12. So second and five. So Paris got to this place on the field a little earlier tonight. And the Hearts came up with an interception. Spencer staying up under center, looking to throw. Quick opener out here in the flats. It's caught, and then not much. He does get inside the 10. Audie Temple's the ball carrier. Durbin's over there. Marcus Robinson comes up from his cornerback spot, but it's enough for a first down. Ball is spotted at the... Seven-yard line from the 13 to the seven, a gain of six, and that's enough for first down. So first and goal to go for the Tigers at the Hart's seven-yard line, 310 left. Spencer up under center, gives it to Arp. Arp turns it up, drives to the goal line, and he is in for the touchdown. Stuart Arp, seven-yard touchdown run. So there goes the shutout. He scores with 3.05 left in the game, and Paris is within 25-6 to six on the seven-yard touchdown run by Stuart Arp. Again, the score comes with 3.05 left in this one. Arp, the seven-yard run. And let's see what they do as far as a conversion attempt here. This will be their first try. They're going to kick. Again, Jacob Whitaker is their kicker. He's the punter. The kicker comes to your foot. He, he's your man. So they'll try the extra point. Good, well, high snap. They get it down, though, and the kick is blocked. All right. Nice work by the Hearts. And I think it was Andy Lustig that got in there with the block. Nice work by Andy Lustig. So the uh, junior doing a good job. 5'9", 140, got the block. Good work, Andy Lustig. And so the score will remain 25-6. to six. So with 3.05 remaining, we'll see about the kickoff now. Courtney, let's take a 30-second break. 30-second break. Heart still in front, 25-6. You're on 97.9 XFM. When it comes to vehicles that get over 30 miles per gallon, we have a lineup the competition just can't touch. At Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota, South Route 45 in Effingham. Shop 24-7 online at danheck.com. Go Hearts. Well want to mention that uh, we are providing live streaming on this broadcast. I thought that was just between us, but uh, let me mention that, that uh, we're doing some live streaming tonight on 97.9 XFM, so feel free to take a look at it as you have the opportunity here in the last couple of minutes, and that's something that we're experimenting and uh, see whether we can make that happen on a regular basis. So live streaming of this ball game, and of course the video will be online a little later in the weekend. So Paris successful on their touchdown, and there's the kickoff. And it's received by the Hearts inside the 10. Still on his feet is Logan Howe. He gets it out to about the 20. So the Hearts trying to see what they can do here to knock off this last three minutes of play. And... They'll have it first and 10 at their 19-yard line. So the Hearts will set up shop at their 19. Again, Stuart Arp scores from seven yards out. The kick was no good, but Paris gets on the scoreboard, and it's a 25-6 game. Again, we'll talk with Coach Mack, a couple of the kids, all the stats, all the scores, and that's all coming up on the Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota postgame show. Kevin Doherty's going to quarterback here for the Hearts in the last couple of minutes of this game. Kevin's done a good job at the JV level, threw for 250-some yards in the JV game this week. He'll run the show here for the last series. Hearts give it up the gut, out across the 20-yard line. Tritt Rush carried for the Hearts. And so you're going to get a 
hear about some kids that if you don't go to JV or freshman games, you might not know. But they've had some big success. Gain a two to the 21, so it's second and eight. And we're down to 235 to go. So 235 remaining. It's 25-6. Effingham in front of the Paris Tigers, and the Hearts are going to go to two and four on the season. Courtney lets me know Cumberland is playing Red Hill, and it's 26-0 uh, Pirates. Here's the handoff. Zach Miller has it, and he's to the 20, and then a very late flag. So the Hearts lose a yard on the play unless there's penalties against the Tigers. Let's see. They'll sort it out. They're going to talk it over. Flag's thrown at about the 30-yard line and also back at about the 20-yard line. So let's see the official still talking it over here. We've got a flag right about the line of scrimmage, and then we have another one farther upfield. So the whole cadre of officials are talking it over here. And we're going to get this one sorted out. We'll hear from the referee just what's the story here. They're still talking. Now they're going to talk to Paris. But there might be two penalties here. Two flags, two different spots of the field. So the official's hmm. talking with Paris now. And we're going to get the official interpretation here now. It's against the hearts. From the referee. Now they're still talking. Here it is. We have a live ball and a dead ball foul on the play. Holding, offense, 10 yards. Personal foul, late hit, after the play, half the distance to the goal. Replay first down. So both the penalties were on the hearts. Okay. So... 10 yards for the hold, then the personal foul from the 21, the 10 yard for the hold would have sent it back to the 11, so half the distance would run it back five and a half, so the ball is just on the five yard line. So now it is second and Hearts have to get it to the 30 for a first down, so but second and 25. So second and 25 is where we are, and the Hearts back to their five yard line. Still two minutes left in this one. Hearts mostly are going to want to get it away from the goal line here. Kevin Doherty in the shotgun for the Hearts. He is going to keep it and gets it out near the 10-yard line. Good, safe play to kill some clock and also get the ball away from the goal line without a handoff. To the 9. So a gain of 4 for Doherty. And that will bring up a third and 21. A gain of a couple up to the 8-yard line brings up third and so, So third down, more importantly, just a minute 25 to go here in the football game. Doherty from the shotgun. Barks out the signals. There's the snap. He's looking to come to the sidelines, turns it up to the 10, to near the 15, and he gets slammed to the turf. As uh, Audie Temples had a little momentum left. Audie Temples, but... Doherty gets it out to the 14, gain of five. So that'll bring up fourth down. And still, Hearts have to get it near the 30-yard line. So fourth and about a 16 here. So the Hearts will boot it out of here. They're letting as much time as they can elapse down to 38 seconds. Zach's milking that play clock, which is down to 10 now. Miller back to punt, and there is the snap. Good one. Takes his time. Good kick down the middle. Hits it about the 38 to the 40, and Cody Sennett's going to tag it out. Now takes an Effingham bounce to about the 44-yard line. And, and now flags. one more late flag. And I think, well, I think one of the hearts got decked by one of the Paris kids as they were coming down the field. And uh, I'd see if the officials agree. Yeah. Uh, personal foul on Paris. Yeah, somebody... Uh, got whacked coming down the field. There are two flags, in fact. 18 seconds left. Let's see the official ruling here. Personal foul. Receiving team 15 yards from the dead ball spot. First down. So the punt 
and the foul occurred outside the 35, so the spot of the football is going to actually put the ball back into Paris territory. They'll have it first and 10 at their 43. So they have 18 seconds left, and they're down 25 to 6. So Paris with it first and 10 at their 43. 18 seconds left. Spencer's going to run from the shotgun here, and this could be the last play of the game. He's looking to throw, has some time, rolling to the far side, looking to get somebody open. He lets it go, and it is knocked down and incomplete. And that'll stop the clock with 10 seconds to go and bring up a second and 10. So Paris will try it one more time here. Second and 10 from the 43. Hearts going to improve to 2-4. and four. Paris will fall to 2-4. And, and the Hearts 2-1 two and one in the, two and one in the and Apollo. Two and, four overall. and heading to, heading to Mattoon next Friday night. Again, uh, there is live streaming available, so if you're headed home from the ballpark, you might want to check that out on 97.9 XFM. And we'll keep you abreast of our plans for that in the future. Second and 10. Paris with the ball at their 43. 10 seconds left here. Spencer from the shotgun. Takes his time. Looking to throw. Let's it go across the middle. And one more interception. Yeah. yeah. One more pick for the Hearts. Cody Sennett with the interception. He runs it across the field. He's going to make sure the times elapse. That's for sure. He's finally going to the far sideline. They finally take him down at the 45. Good work by Cody Sennett to run the clock out. He did his job. Cody Sennett with one more pick. Hearts three gained interceptions and two recovered fumbles tonight. And it just leads them to an exciting win tonight. Hearts a winner, 25-6. to six. And the fireworks fire courtesy of the football moms. On the way, the Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota postgame show. We'll have interviews with the coach and the kids. Also, we'll remind you about the homecoming king and queen, Millie's stats, Courtney scores. I'll remind you about the scoring. It's all on the way in a minute on the Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota postgame show. Your final here at Klosterman Field on homecoming night. Effingham 25, Paris 6 on 97.9 XFM. Got aches and pains from those football games? Stop by Andy's Health Mart Pharmacy and see what we can do for you. Ask one of our pharmacists about the products that can get you back into game shape. Locally owned and conveniently located at 805 West Fayette. Andy's Health Mart Pharmacy, caring for you and about you. Go, Hart, go! Go, Hart, go! Go, Hart, go! Andy's Health Mart Pharmacy, built on trust and faith. When it comes to vehicles that get over 30 miles per gallon, we have a lineup the competition just can't touch. At Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota, South Route 45 in Effingham. Shop 24-7 online at danheck.com. Go Hearts. What to do? Were you watching the clock to see how much time you had to run out after you got the picture at the end? <laughs> yeah, I heard, <laughs> I heard the, the buzzer at the end. I was like, all right, well, I guess I'll go down. <laughs> I knew that's what you were doing. I knew you were killing the clock. Good man. I tell you, we, we've uh, had such a tough start to the season. Get the big overtime win last night. Win at home here on homecoming. I tell you, it's nice to get the ship right, isn't it? Oh, my gosh, yeah. It's awesome coming back to what the hearts are used to and winning and just playing so hard and we really pulled it off tonight and it yeah, was awesome absolutely and homecoming sometimes can be a lot of distractions <laughs> oh yeah but you guys did a good job of staying focused tonight oh yeah um well we had a huge crowd and we had a lot to work for and we have a awesome fans and an awesome band and it's just we wanted to make everyone proud so we played our hearts out yeah and it worked out <laughs> exactly. exactly right you guys did a nice job and i don't know who did better the offense or the defense you kind of complemented one another it really is a lift of the defense so when the offense can can generate some offense and some yeah score. yeah like long drives it's just yeah the offense kept pounding it to the end zone and the defense kept bringing it so it was yeah it really complemented each other and we fed off of each other's excitement because when one side of the ball does awesome well the other side benefits as well exactly it was awesome. so exactly so now you hit the road go to mattoon and kind of an unknown quantity we've right? never played them before in the regular season so right. I guess we'll see what happens yeah thank you very much i know you've been there for track meets so yep yeah i've the been setup there a couple there. times and yeah, it'll be a good game. You know, it'll be a good test from these back-to-back -back wins and 
We'll make sure to bring it. <laughs> I like the sound of that. Well, hey, happy homecoming and congratulations on a great Thank night. you. Cody Sinner, Thank you. thanks for coming up for the post-game visit. You <laughs> betcha. Old number 29 got the big pick right there at the end of the game to seal the deal. So appreciate him coming up for the post-game visit. And uh, Coach Mack will be up once the media throng is finished with him. So let's... Northside Ford and Effingham is proud to be a sponsor of high school sports. Stop by and see all the new and exciting 2013 Fords in stock now at Northside Ford or visit them online at EffinghamFord.com. Well, see, wait a minute. We we found another player. He's recovered himself. You know, you walked right by me today when I was out here setting up. You had your headphones on. You were in a zone, so you must have been determined to play well tonight, Tyler Johnson. Oh, yeah. I was, I was getting in my zone. Got to listen to my music before <laughs> the game, so. No doubt that this is a whole lot more fun this last couple. Oh, of yeah. Today was today was a blast. I loved it. It was great. What What do you think were the keys to us getting off to a, well, I guess getting off to a good start was a key? Uh, we came out, came out with a fire. Hold on, I just ran up the stairs. I'm kind of tired. <laughs> came out with the fire and intensity. Um, came out popping, hitting hard. So I feel like that that got everyone on the sideline fired up, and then we just took it from there. Yeah, I built on it. I got to hear it up here. A and I'm, we talked to Cody about that a minute ago. How the offense and defense complemented one another tonight. Oh yeah, yeah. I think that's a a big reason why we won. You know, you think about those long drives. Paris was back on their heels for a long time, and, and the offense chewed up a lot of ground and, and a lot of time off the clock. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Sorry. <laughs> I've had a cold, so I'm getting ready to cough. I know the feeling. <clears throat> well, anyway, Tyler Johnson is our guest here, by the way, and one of the Hearts captains. And I guess part of the thing about being a captain is uh, making sure that the other kids on the team didn't get too down early in the season, so now you have some. Especially since they came from that came from that bigger conference, played to bigger schools and whatnot, so they're, they're going to be a they're going to be a good team. So we just got to bring it to them. So you guys are going to be the first team to beat Matt. Team. <laughs> Hope so. I like the sound of that, Tyler. Congratulations, happy homecoming to you. Buddy. Thank you, Greg. You bet, Tyler Johnson, one of the Hearts Go captains. Appreciate him coming up for the post game visit here. Hearts again, a winner, twenty five six. He is going to yield the headphones to him. You don't really think he was going to run off with them on, do you? Uh, I wouldn't have been surprised. <laughs> he was pretty excited when I picked him to come up here and talk. You bet. Coach Mack, thanks, and congratulations on a good win tonight. Thank you. It really was. It was a good overall win for us. Uh, offensively, we stepped up and played well. We got to open the game with a nice drive and, mm -hmm. and punched it in early. And uh, defensively, we stepped it up and had three or four turnovers uh, against them and and uh, I thought it was really probably our, our hardest hitting game of the year and uh, you know Paris brought it we you know they're, they're a good team and uh, you know they don't have a lot of numbers out there and they have a lot of kids that go both ways but uh, you know they got some good athletes our kid is, is a great runner you know he's all conference last year mm -hmm. and uh, I'm not sure exactly what happened with their quarterback he didn't start the game but you know he threw for 280, 300 yards last last week against Mount Zion, and uh, I thought we did a really good job, except for a long pass play right before half. I thought we we shut down their passing game really well, and then what th three interceptions tonight? Mm -hmm. So um, and two game fumbles. Yeah, so it's five turnovers. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. The only disappointment for me was we had two turnovers ourselves, and and uh, you know one of the things we always strive for is to have zero turnovers. Sure. One was a tip pass, and. And uh, the other one was uh, probably questionable whether we probably should have thrown that ball. But um, you know, Nathan did a great job of running, running uh, tonight, and uh, running the show. And we spread the ball around to a lot of different people tonight, so that was important. Sustained offensive drives too. When you got the lead, you did a good job of chewing up clock. I, I think we owned almost the entire third quarter. Yeah. And unfortunately, we didn't score every time we had it, but yeah. uh, we had a couple of penalties that got us, uh, put us back, but 
you know, and that continues to plague us a little bit. But, but for the most part, we did, and, and we changed field position a number of times. And, and even if we didn't score, uh, you know, we put them, and you know, we had a nice punt down inside the ten. Uh, that uh, even though we didn't score on that series, it put them in, in uh, back, you know, put their back against the wall. So. Um, you know, I think our special teams, for the most part, I'm not exactly sure what was with uh, Zach on our place kicks, uh, but uh, I think he was a little antsy out there, pulling his head up. And but uh, you know, he hit the last one, and he had some a couple good punts tonight. So yeah. Northside Ford and Effingham is proud to be a sponsor of high school sports. Stop by and see all the new and exciting 2013 Fords in stock now at Northside Ford, or visit them online. At EffinghamFord.com. By the way, uh, Sir Gordo, the offensively we're, we're coming along, and we're kind of it's kind of nice because Kai Barman was able to play a little bit tonight. Yeah. And you know, three weeks ago or four weeks ago, we so thought he was done for the season. That, 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 so uh, it's going to be nice to have him back uh, in the mix. And uh, that's a situation where we're a little bit thin, mm-hmm. and uh, it's going to be nice to have a little bit more uh, depth in that position. And you did, you were able to kind of lose <laughs> a lot of kids. A lot of youngsters got we did. some play time. Yeah. Defensively, we've been doing that too. And, uh, you know, we found a place to get uh, Trent Barnhart in there defensively uh, and utilize his quickness and strength uh, up front. Yeah, and, you know, that young man's not afraid of anything. You know, against 270 or, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. And, and uh, you know, I think that helped us with the pass rush. I think when we decided to go a little bit smaller and quicker and athletic with uh, with Scott Dank and, and Peyton Bushu up front and, uh, and uh, Carter Hayes and uh, but we've gotten better defensively, and so uh, uh, you know we're not going to be we're not going to match up and, and you know stand toe to toe with a lot of teams. But you know if we can slant and and uh, be quick off the ball and, and get some penetration, then, then that's going to help us even more defensively. Well, we're forty percent of the way to the goal uh, of five that you needed to win to have a shot at the playoffs. So uh, got to keep that going. And last road game of the regular season next week at Manti. Yeah, it'd be kind of nice to not have any more room games after next week. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's going to be a big game. It's going to be a big game for us, and you know, it'll probably be a big game for them, too. I'm not exactly sure what their record is. They're they playing Mount Zion tonight? They're, they got Salem tonight. So, you know. <coughs> Mount Zion and Charleston's the other game. So, uh, you know, we're probably going to be both 2-1 and one in conference, and so next week will be a good game for both of us. So. But it's just going to be fun. I don't think too many people at least in the high school, and none of these kids have played Matt before, because our us, us old people in the old days where we used to play him at the lower yeah. levels all the time. Yeah. And, uh, I still remember uh, it was probably our first playoff game when I was head coach. We got to play uh, Coach Fox's Matt Toon team way back then. So, you know, I still have a few memories about them playing Matt Toon, but none of the other kids do, and so it'll have to make it interesting. You and Sam Rickleman remember. Yeah. Sammy called and let us know about uh, that so, game back in the 80s. Yeah. Well, congratulations, Adu. I know you love homecoming. I know that, <laughs> but now you can enjoy it. Yeah, I love it. We, 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 Tuesday, we had all the rain. We didn't even get outside. Mm-hmm. And then Wednesday, we had to cut practice short because of the parade. It's like, okay, good old homecoming. <laughs> but, you know, it's great. We had a great crowd here tonight, and there's great participation in the parade on Wednesday, and the kids love that stuff. And, and I think it gets them up. And, and yeah, I said before to some people, it's probably a good week for us to not do a lot of work. Because I know Paris is banged up, and we've been banged up. We're in the middle of the season. Mm-hmm. You just need to take it easy on the hit and, and uh, mentally prepare for games more than anything else. So next week's going to be a big mental preparation. Week. Now, Wayne, I'd be remiss, wouldn't I, if I didn't ask him about the flash mob, the big teacher dance. <laughs> That I mean, was fantastic. It's by the available way. on on our website, yes. of course. Tell you me. put that on your website too. Man. Sure, we want everybody to see that you still got the moves, coach. <laughs> that was a lot of fun, and uh, the biggest thing was the kids, you know, giving us a standing ovation. They got a kick out of it. You know, I gave some people some trouble, and I wasn't sure I was going to do it at first. And luckily, uh, they made a DVD for us to practice, and Jen and I both practiced at home a little bit. And, I felt comfortable enough to not make a complete fool out of myself. <laughs> but uh, the only biggest thing was seeing those kids in the front row, a bunch of seniors, and, and they just kind of went nuts afterwards. And that was fun. That was the funnest part of it. You bet. Well, we have had several people ask, where can we find Coach Max Dance Studio at to learn? <laughs> I mean, do you give Coach lessons Dance or what? Studio, huh? <laughs> well, I don't think anybody's going to find that anywhere. <laughs> oh. 
Hey, that's, that's him in some ways. Fair enough. Congratulations on a good win. Happy homecoming, Thank Mike. You. you bet. Arts coach Mike McDonald. Appreciate him coming up for the post-king visit. Again, our final score tonight, Effingham 25, Paris 6, Hearts making a happy homecoming.